We continue to preview the 2022 college football season, and our stop today is Wichita, Kansas, where we get to visit with the new head coach at Friends, Coach Terry Harrison. And I know that we've already visited about you taking over the position. That was just right before Christmas. I, I always feel like when I visit with you, Coach, that we just pick up right where we left off. So I'd like to do that now, officially. Pick up where we left off. You were talking about hitting the ground running, recruiting, the different things that Friends has to offer there. So you've been through the spring now. Tell us what's happened in the meantime. Yeah, you know, it, it, like you talked about it, that seems like, I don't know if it seems like yesterday or 10 years ago. You know, I, I do remember <laughs> that vaguely. But, you know, when you take over a new job and, and, you know, you're so busy recruiting and trying to get ready for spring ball, I mean, it seems like it goes by just in a, you know, in a flash. And so, you know, like we talked about last time, we're recruiting went really well. We ended up, you know, number one, we inherited just a phenomenal group of kids. Um, just excited for change. Um, you know, there's always anxiousness and nervousness, right? Like like normal when you get a new coach and a new program. Um, but man, just have embraced absolutely everything about our program. And so honestly, you know, on that level, it's been a little easy because, you know, just the attitude of the kids and just the gratefulness of the kids has been awesome. Um, we were able to bring in, I think we were right at 18 transfers a semester. So spring ball was, was great. We were very deep. Um, I think we ended up doing spring ball with close to 90, you know, between the 80 and 90 range. Um, and so just very productive. We were able to, you know, have those 15 practices and have a little bit of a scrimmage at the end there to, to, to at least do a basic install of our offense and defense. And quite honestly, it was fun. I mean, it just was, you forget, you know, when you're, when you're somewhere as long as we were, it, it, it kind of runs itself and kids know what you do. And then, Man, when you step into somewhere and you're coaching some kids to do something totally different than they've ever done before, man, it made me feel like a middle school tennis coach, middle school tennis coach again, like starting fresh, you know. But, but for me, as a, my personality and our coaching staff's personality, it that's kind of what what you, what, I, what we were asking for, just a new challenge, right? And it and it certainly was challenging, but just to watch from practice one to practice sixteen, the growth they had was. Man, just at, I mean, it just can't be overstated how phenomenal they did and how much they embraced um, what we're doing. So that that was probably one of the most rewarding things I've ever been a part of. You know, from coaching high school ball and now into college, just seeing you know that growth. And then you know when you're at a program that struggled the way Friends has, you know, as much as anything is, is you know you want to run schemes because we we want to be successful. But just to see that that hope in their eyes, you know, so from that first meeting we had where there's a little bit of anxiousness and unsuredness to then man, to see them getting better every day and understand like, wow, you know, we can be good at this. That, that to me is what is, is what makes this job worth it. Right. Is seeing the hope in their eye and just that, that, um, you know, that's the excitement that, that, that brought. So that, that was super awesome. Recruiting went great. Um, you know, like every year, it feels like, you know, the longer we do this, we feel like we, we're very good at recruiting and, and, and we feel like we, we, we are great evaluators, probably as deep a recruiting class as we've ever Put together top to bottom right um and we've been very fortunate to have very good players in the past so you know those the incoming team you know combined with those returners is I mean, it, it really is a, a you know exciting time as far as the talent level and the uh, you know prospect for the future so we're man just a, it, was, it was a great spring like i said and summers you know it's been awesome and we we really can't wait to to get going again kids that, that may have been thinking about coming to friends prior to you coming in Obviously, especially I, I, I want to hit the offensive side of the ball there in particular, you know, that that could change some ideas, change some mindsets as to, yes, I still want to go. I'm not sure if I want to be a part of this offensive look. Yes, I really want to be a part of this offensive look. And I, I'd, I'd like you to talk about that a little bit, too. Friends last year was in the bottom 10 in the NAI in so many statistical categories. I mean, not the least of which scoring 13 and a half points a game, 91, 91st out of 98 teams in the NAIA. And so obviously there are some adjustments that are going to be made, but, but you're bringing in a, a whole different look. Can you take us through that a bit? Yeah. You know, we, we tell everyone it's always interesting because you know what we do, right? We, we run the flex bone. Now we do some things a little different than other teams that do that as far as, you know, the, the, the air raid passing game we've added to that. But um, you know, it's people, people ask us that a lot because we are unique and we're very different in what we do on the offensive side. But, you know, like you talked about, if, if you're somewhere that struggled offensively, whether it's friends last year or, or another high school that, you know, you're taking over for a coach, really, it's really not that different as far as when you walk in. I mean, these kids, you know, the kids here, look, they, they can look up the stats just like you did. You know, the fact is our staff and our, our offensive staff that all came with us here to friends, so we're all together still, has been the top scoring offense in the conference for the last two years. 
Um, and so I think it's a pretty easier sell. <laughs> you know, when you're coming in, it's like, look, we're the number one scoring team in the conference, number number one this, number one this, number one this. It kind of helps to to sell that, you know, and, and I don't know if sell is the word, but I think it helps kids be excited because, you know, they know when, you, when you're scoring 80 points in a game and 70 points in a game, people tend to notice that, you know, and so – uh, that helped a lot. But then what's cool is there's so much misunderstood about what we do on offense, right? Just, just because when you're unique, it's not right or wrong. It's just kind of, it's just the way it is. And when you're unique in what you do, kind of like we are, there's just so many misconceptions out there and people don't understand, you know? And so we were able to have meetings early. So we made sure we brought these kids in. Um, and for instance, we we're talking about our passing game and, and even the receivers here were like, wow, that's the most, you know, that's the coolest stuff I've ever seen or coolest stuff I've ever heard. Because in the end, you know, football is such a silly game. You know, it's there's 11 kids. You know, it's, it's really pretty simple and silly when you really break it down, how serious people take it. But when you're able to show them that, hey, look, we know what we're talking about. We're going to teach you football at a higher level than you've ever been taught. Quite honestly, watching the receivers here embrace that and be like, man, they, they didn't even know, you know, the, what the way we teach the passing game. It was just, you know, it, it is universal for whatever offense you run. And so there, that was immediate buy-in on that end. So that was, I don't know if a challenge is a word. It's just something we were aware of, and we wanted to make sure those guys understood it. And you know, I think it speaks to the kids more than anything because kids want to be successful, right? Kids want to be competitive, and kids don't like being the the lowest scoring team in the conference like they were at friends and in, in, in previously. Right. And for, for different reasons. And so uh, what I know here is the kids that have been here, we have some very, very talented players that were here before we got here. They're, that are still here, obviously. And they're just excited that, you know, they're getting prepared. Um, we're very thorough. Um, we teach them about football um, more than just run plays. And so, you know, that part w was definitely easy. And then on the other side, on the recruiting side, you know, most of the recruits we brought in visited us at our previous school, you know, so they, they, they watched us coaching the game, even though it was in a different uniform. And so the coolest part for them was, you know, the cool part is they knew how we coached. They know what we can do and, you know, and hopefully what will come in, over time here at Fringe University but then they just got to come and see it on their recruiting visits. It wasn't about football because they knew what we were about. And it was just more about the awesome resources here at Fringe University, being in Wichita. And, you know, like you talked about, just the, the beautiful dorms, you know, and the things that, you know, not, not every school has to offer. Right. And, and specifically in our conference, in our main recruiting competition, it, we really think it's unrivaled. And so um, that was kind of easy um, to, to put it that way, I guess, for on the recruiting side. And so, you know, now it's, you know, off to getting everybody together and developing that team chemistry, which we hope we're, you know, we think we're very good at and we've been able to do and, and trying to build a program that I know you and I have talked before honors God. Right. And that was one of our football. That was one of our football core values at our previous institution. But here it's actually in the mission and the vision, the values of the university. And so, you know, now these kids that we retain, the kids that we retain and the kids that we recruited now are somewhere that, you know, the university and the athletic program is just completely aligned you know, as, as tight of alignment as you can be as far as the, you know, vision of the board, the vision of the president, all the way down, you know, to the freshman football player, true alignment in, in our mission and our goals. And I, I think to me that that's honestly what's what's very exciting, even outside of, you know, trying to score a little more, score some more points. And all of those things sound very fun, too, by the way, too. I appreciate hearing that. We're co talking with Coach Terry Harrison from Friends in his first season at the program there in Wichita. And obviously not his first season at the collegiate coaching level, but uh, first season there in Wichita. And let's talk about that offense a little bit right now, Coach. And I'll let you uh, tell me a little bit about some of those players that we are players or more that we may be seeing here in 2022 because we're um, six weeks away. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and actually to be five, honest, to be, five weeks away, I think yeah, actually you know for what? your it, first game, it's going to get here pretty fast. <laughs> so, um, very fortunate here. Um, you know, our kids are actually on campus right now. We have 102 players on campus right now. Um, we have about, you know, 15 to 20 that, that will report on August the 4th, you know, just for different reasons. They're, you know, stayed home a little bit longer with their families, which is awesome. Right. They, they just did that. But a lot of players did take advantage of coming in. Um, and we're actually for our incoming players. Um, set up, but we have an academic success course, and we've done that for two weeks now. And our kids are just learning how to be a college student. And you were able to lift with them and get some, you know, walk through practice install stuff done, which is just what a great opportunity, you know, to set these kids up for success. So it is what, however many weeks away, but we we actually do have our kids right now, and and I'll be meeting with our team here in a, here in a couple hours, right? So that's kind of cool. But um, no, on the offensive side, we, we the, the reality is we inherited some very good players. Um, 
couldn't be more excited about um, some of our receivers, specifically um, Kevin Green, the kid that was on this team last year, has has totally embraced who we are and what we do. And, and quite honestly, is as talented as any kid I've ever coached at that position at any level. And so very excited about him. And even more than that, you know, how he's, how he's embraced this new team culture, you know, and, and it really has become who he is, right? And that's been awesome to see that. Um, young man like, you know, Christian Zaricki, who's a receiver, a Wichita kid, played at Wichita North High School. Um, and so he's playing in his hometown, you know, and that's really cool. Um, so that's cool. And then Noah Ferguson, a Bishop Carroll High School receiver. Dad's a local uh, coach here at Bishop Carroll, and he's on our team. And so that, those guys have been phenomenal. Um, and then we've got some other kids that, that, that we've recruited, very excited about our receivers. Um, so that's that's been fun to watch those guys. Um, and they've been working really closely. A lot of, uh, you know, it is in the summer, you can get out on the turf and do some individual time. But, you know, the quarterbacks, uh, Jack Mullen was a, a quarterback here last year. He's a Kansas City area kid, just has done a phenomenal job. And, and actually one of my former uh, quarterbacks, his name is Kevontae Baker, um, played at Wichita Heights High School, um, had a short run at junior college, battled a little bit of injuries, but he's back in Wichita. And he's on, he was on campus this spring, got to do spring ball. And, you know, on the athletic side, maybe the most dynamic football player I've ever seen in my life. And so him and Jack have just been awesome for each other. They've become friends and they, and they peer coach each other all the time. So excited about that. Had some transfers at our, our B-back spot. Um, Zach Dressel, another local uh, a local kid um, who's done awesome. Um, and we brought in some very talented uh, kids there. Um, and then, you know, to round it out, our, our slots um, have been great. Lake and Cloudus, uh, you, you might, I don't know if you've, you've heard that name, but he was a conference player of the week a couple of times last year, NAI academic All-American, um, high, school, high school wrestler kid from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, and just phenomenal. I'm excited about him. And then the entire offensive line returned. So we have every returning, we have every starter returning on the offensive line and every rotator. Um, and we were able to bring in our, most talented offensive line recruiting class we've ever done. So, man, just great kids um, on that offensive line. A lot of local kids. Noah Redcorn out of Cape and Mount Carmel. Um, Austin Bell, who's a Kingman High School kid. You know, the Phillips twins from Choctaw, Oklahoma, down there where you're at. And so just great kids. And, you know, for those kids that are returners, the unique part is we haven't really gotten to know their families yet. And so we're really excited for the fall to start because, you know, think about what their family is, experience has been. And, and quite honestly, it's not been what they dreamed of when they dreamt of college football. Um, and so we're more than anything else, I'm excited to get to know their families and have them on our campus together and get to have them, you know, see what it feels like just to be a part of a program that is, um, you know, one that we hope is God honoring like ours. And so can't, couldn't be more excited about that on the offensive side of the ball. They did fantastic in the spring. And um, man, some of our incoming players that we brought in, um, just fast, fast, fast kids. And so that would be the one word I would, uh, to sum up our recruiting <laughs> class is speed. Um, you know, we had them come in and we, and we do a deal with it. You know, they run forties like every school in America, you know, it's kind of funny. Why do you run? I don't even get the 40 yard dash thing, but we do it because everyone else does it. Um, and so they, they, they've been our fastest group we've ever brought in. So, you know, too many to mention other than we really, really are excited about, um, the athletic, you know, the prospect athletically, on the field, at least on the talent side of what we can do. And obviously all the, the intangible things we have to work on. And, you know, the reality is we need to, we can, you can be the most talented team in America, but you know, we, we need to go through some hard times together, you know, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. A little bit of shared suffering, 6 a.m. workouts and um, you know, meetings and classes and late practices. And so we hope, you know, service projects, we hope that's kind of developing this team chemistry and this team bond. And that's how you can really maximize the talent that we're kind of talking about. Oh boy, it's, I'm I'm excited. You always get me excited too when when you visit. It's or which one of those things. I I know they talk about kids being ready to run through a brick wall if the coach talks. I'm 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 ready, coach. Let you know. Let's let's get out there and make something happen. All right, you you've dropped a number of names. Let me let you drop a few more. I'll get you started on the defensive side of the ball. Nolan Ewing, Marco Torres, Keon Dickerson. Your three top returnees, according to last season, and by way of tackles on this team, uh, Ewing and Torres also leading the way for uh, TFLs as well. So, uh, talk about your defense. Yeah, you know, like you mentioned, Nolan Ewing was the first one. You know, he he's one of the first kids I met. He he's been here the longest, um, so he's a he's a veteran. You know, as far as been on campus here for three, maybe four years, I think. Um, and quite honestly, more than even football, who he is, he is very talented, very good defensive back. Um, just great ball skills, aggressive, you know, but more than that, super coachable, awesome family, Kansas kid. Um, but he honestly, 
man, he'd been like a mentor for me because I'm he's the one I'm asking, like, where is this? Where is that? Tell me about <laughs> this. Tell me about that. Because he's been here so long, you know, and so he's kind of been a little bit like an assistant coach, at least at some level, because he's been helping us out, you know, um, because he's been here so long. So but, you no, know, Nolan's going to have a great year, we think. And um, man, he's when you've been somewhere so long, you've seen so much transition, you know, uh, one of the trademarks of, you know, struggling programs is bad retention. You know, the kids come and go. Right. And um, he's been a part of that. And so one of the trademarks of our program has been great retention. You know, kids come and stay. And so, you know, he considering all the change he's seen, um, man, he his positivity, his optimism, um, the goals he has for himself in this program are just you know, you just just a mark of, you know, very, very mature kid. You know, him and, and Waylon Chance also on the other side that I didn't get to mention. Same way. Two guys that have been here a long time that have been awesome you know, leaders and kids that I've leaned on as almost as friends, you know, and peers more so than, than players. And so, you know, that's been cool. Like you talked about, you know, Marco Torres is a kid who plays with a high motor. We actually remember um, grading him out last year as far as we're going to play against him. And we remember evaluating him like, holy smokes, this kid plays hard. Um, and that's what he does. He lifts the way he lifts, the way he walks down the hallway and the way he plays on the football field is very similar, right? Just a, all energy, energy, energy. Um, but but a great um, but in a good way, a positive way, right? A positive energy and a high motor. Um, and KD, you mentioned, has been for me. You know, it's really funny when you coach against you know we, when you coach against a team and then you now become their coach. It's been very interesting to see you know um, to see those guys now play and then fit within our scheme. But quite honestly, man, you know some of these kids are they're such great players. It's like, man, why didn't we recruit those kids out of high school? How do we not know about that kid? You know, so. We wish we'd have been coaching them the whole time because they are perfect fits for who we are. And so those guys have been great. Um, and then, you know, all the, the kids around, there, there's more, you know, we you end up forgetting. Kids. It's just crazy when you start talking and you, and you hear names, you forget others. But those guys really have, you know, done a, done a phenomenal job. And there's another senior on that defensive line. His name's Tucker Trevett. And he's a local kid, just Wichita guy. And he's been here a long time. He's an all-conference defensive lineman. Um, he's a member of our member of our student ministry team and, you know, an organizer of team chapel for us. And just, man, just the, I mean, just the model, the role model for a fringe university student that you want. And so, man, I, I really hope I, you know, we've been very good at tackles for loss and sacks and turnovers are on defense. I um, mean, and, and my hope is that these kids, you know, they, they really do fit what we do schematically. Um, and so I, I really am excited to watch them you know, hopefully play in a defense that really does fit some of their strengths really well, you know, and I think they're going to have a great year. And, you know, our defense coordinator, Coach Kemp, you know, he's been with me since Heights High School. You know, they're they're going to love playing for him. He's, he's just one of those guys like you talk about, run through a brick wall. Like that's um, – he's that guy. And so it, it, it's going to be fun to watch those guys play together. And they've probably – they've progressed as fast as any – um, any in installation we've had, th that defensive unit really has just, man, they've been they've been moving and clicking. And, you know, they're getting close to ready to play a game at this point, right? Now it's kind of refining some of that stuff. Well, Coach, I talked about, you know, just about five weeks away because you, you all have the August game. You're going to be uh, taking on Panhandle State, Oklahoma Panhandle, uh, in Goodwill, Oklahoma. Then you're on the road again. The conference schedule gets started, and no favors there get to – Take on Kansas Wesleyan, your first conference game. The first time that friends, fans will get a chance to see you on your home turf will be on September 10th. And, hey, those, uh, those uh, folks from North Newton coming to town there, I think you're familiar with that team just a bit, aren't you? You, you know, heard Father Abraham a time or two in your life, maybe so. And, by the way, let me, let me drop this one really quickly before you talk about the schedule. That September the 10th game in Wichita, it is very, very, very likely – that Midwest Sports Saturday will be there on campus that day too. So I'm, I'm excited about that. That's already been circled on my calendar. So that should be a lot of fun. But the, the schedule, Coach, now just about five weeks away. Yeah, you know, it, like you mentioned, it, it's getting real close. And um, quite honestly, you know, I'm, I'm so excited to be an underdog again, to be honest with you. You know, when, <laughs> when we took over our previous school, you know, it was the worst, worst college program in, in the country at any level. And, you know, I, I was kind of – born and raised with a chip on my shoulder, you know? And so I, 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 re I really am excited to be the underdog again. It, it just is different, you know, and when you're, when you're picked to win conference every year, that, that has its own, you know, its own challenges and own hurdles, but you know, it, it is, it's really fun. You know, friends hasn't had a winning season in eight or nine years. I think it is. Um, and for us, you know, it's, it, it's just kind of funny, you know, we're just sitting here, you know, you hear a lot and you hear a lot of people talk about our schedule and where we're going to be. And, you know, there's a lot of excitement here, 
but like I told you, you know, we're, <laughs> we're just trying to be relevant. You know what I mean? We're trying to get a first down, you know, we're trying to get a first down. We're trying to have a competitive game in the fourth quarter, um, which friends hasn't had in a long time. Um, and so we, our goals are very, are very, are simply that, right? We, we know we're going to be picked at the bottom of the conference, you know, likely last as we should be, you know, we, we're all brand new here together and, you know, there's no guarantee for anything. And so we're, we're excited to be the underdog. I'll, I'll leave it at that, you know, and, and like you mentioned, we're very strategic in our scheduling. Um, you know, we don't want to be a team that just hones in simply on uh, wanting to be the best team in this conference. We want to be the best team we can be. And when you go and play a team, you know, like Oklahoma Panhandle, who used to be a division two team, um, that, that's going to set us up for success. And we're going to learn so many hard lessons. We're going to learn how to get on the road. We're going to learn, you know, the coach, that's going to be our first opportunity to coach, um, coach kids during a game. Um, and so, you know, we're going to, that for us is just, it's just learning how we operate on game days. And, you know, we're going to go, we practice a whole lot around here, you know, and, and we do that because we really want to win. Um, but that's certainly not the point. Our purpose is so much greater and really, you know, I love breaking the season down into three game stretches. So you kind of mentioned that three game stretch. The reality is, you know, Kansas West has been very good. You know, Bethel has been very good for the last, you know, four or five, three or four years. And so, man, what a great way to truly see where we're at as a program. And for me, more than anything is four and five years from now, man, we're going to be able to look back and, and see how much we've grown as a program. Yeah. Right. And everything we do in these first three, four, five, six, really this whole first season is going to be something to really help us kind of steer the ship for this season and, and kind of say, okay, how, how can we set this program on the right path for, for what we believe could be an elite program at this level? Um, and, and part of that is, is I love those games. I love playing Kansas Wesson on the road. They're a very good program. They do a great job. Um, I'm excited for that home game against the talented players at Bethel college. And we, we know those kids really well, um, very talented, good kids. Um, and what that's going to do, like like I mentioned, is going to help just kind of set this path for our program. And, you know, we're going to be in awesome games and awesome scenarios, hopefully great environments. Um, and, and it's going to help train and our staff and our players on the, what, what does a championship program look like. Right. And Kansas Wesleyan's done that. Bethel has done that. Um, and it's going to help us, man, really see kind of where we're at. And, you know, it, it's a win win for us. You know, if you know, we're, I promise you we're going to try to win those games really hard. Um, but really for us if we can be relevant in, in those games, I don't know the scores of the games from friends in Kansas Wesleyan last year. I don't know the, you know, I don't know the non-conference record um, for, for friends in the last nine years, but I do know um, that simply being relevant and competitive and operating on a championship level on the sideline and the post game and the pregame, you know, that's the goal. Um, the rest will take care of itself. And, and if we're at a, if we're at a spot as a program, we're ready to win those games. We will. Uh, and if not, we will certainly win by learning those lessons early. But uh, we, we, I can promise you we will give it our best shot and our kids will be ready to play. You know, and hopefully we can, um, you know, rise up to those early challenges and then, you know, from there, learn from there and, and either, you know, build on build on the positives and build on the negatives. And um, I can tell you there's no one game that's more important than another for us. That sounds like coach speak, but it, it really is, you know, it, it is who we are. And, and it'll be the same the next year, too, you know. And so for this program right now. Playing that panhandle game is, is big, really big for us, just for learning how to play, you know, and learning, hey, that these coaches are serious. They're going to coach us in a way that does honor God, even in a game when people are watching and there's a score kept. And, you know, I think for our kids, that's going to be the coolest part. They're going to see on a Saturday, we're no different than we are on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday and a Thursday. And, and that's what would be really cool. And then our families, it'll be their first opportunity to see that, hey, this is a program we can be proud to be a part of. You know, outside of the score, man, we're going to, man, we're going to be, we, we know we'll be competitive, right? Whatever that means, I don't know yet. But outside of the score, it'll be something that when you're wearing, you know, Falcon football stuff, um, people will know it, it is a championship program. Um, and it's something that we can all be very proud of. And, you know, in, in the end, we'll, we're going to build something here that, that, that we believe over time will hopefully be elite. Well, yeah, and you, you end with that, but that's uh, talking about elite. You ended the, the last time we visited, and I think I need to put the link in the description. I'll try to do that sometime later after this is posted, but uh, the link to the last time we visited, because you talked about that too. You want to be relevant in the conference. And uh, so no matter what that looks like, we don't know just yet. could look like a lot of different things. We will find out next week because KCAC Media Day is next week, so we're going to find out where you officially picked uh, uh according to the preseason polls, and I know those are just numbers, but still the, the, the student-athletes know those. 
They, it's it's not going to be something that gets past them, so they'll be aware of that too. Coach Terry Harrison, thank you so much for taking time with me today. It's always a privilege, and I, I don't say that lightly. It's always a privilege to get to visit with you. I appreciate hearing what you have to say, talking about the, you know your, your program, uh, the mission, wanting to honor God and what you do. That That is not something that's taken lightly. So we know now in about five weeks, I think 36 days from today as of this recording, you guys are going to be in Goodwill, Oklahoma, taking on Oklahoma Panhandle State. And then, of course, uh, an 11-game season, your first season at Friends. Coach, success to you all. We'll be following you this year, and very likely we'll get a chance to see you face-to-face September 10th, Midwest Sports Saturday in Wichita. Hey, thank you so much. Look forward to hosting you in, in, uh, in September, and, man, going to you know help promote the channel. Thanks for everything you do for our kids and our families and uh, really are just first-class guy and a first-class program, so thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach.